Rich Swan and Willie Mack come down to the ring and they call out Violent by Design for interfering in their match last week. But TJP and Fala Ba come out and TJP says, look, we know you got a problem with Violent by Design, but you can't just leapfrog the line. We're going to be the number one contenders. Willie Mack says, hey, we're the number one contenders. Then Violent by Design comes out. Teams get ready to face off. Everybody's in the ring. You know, it looks like a fight's about to break out. But then the good brothers come out and they say they still want the tag team titles. Then they get in the ring and we got all four teams having a, what do you call that? A, a, a Mexican showdown. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, uh, um, and then Tommy Dreamer comes out. He says all four teams will be in a four way at Slammiversary. And he makes a match for tonight against. Uh, with Rich Swan versus Carl Anderson versus Diener versus TJP. Uh, Carl Anderson gets the pin on Diener for the win. All right. What do you think about this? So they they announced Dreamer as the anthem representative. I'm like, here we fucking go. Like, this is going to be a thing now. Um, I was very concerned. I mean, not concerned. I was confused why Diener was in this match because I would imagine he's not defending the title at anniversary. But then I realized when they announced next week's match, they paired the four guys who are most built like each other. And then mm -hmm. next week is their larger partners. Yeah. You now like a Haas match, so to speak. So I said, you know what? I like that. Yeah. It made yeah. me appreciate this match more. And it makes me look forward to next week. So it was just, I just like the way they put it together. As far as everyone come, when Swan at first came out, I'm like, cool, I'm sign me up for this shit. I should have known they're going to get as many people onto the card as possible. Um, the thing is, the Good Brothers haven't beat anybody in for, forever. They've been losing, actually. Um, Swan and Willie Mack haven't even teamed up in forever, so they haven't beat anybody. Um, TJP and Fala Bob and Tino forever haven't really beat anybody. You know what I'm saying? So it's just a bunch of people just thrown into a match. They're not – but no one in the tag team division gets hot or beats anybody, so it's not like you could put Triple XL or uh, a couple of – you know, I'm trying to think what other team they have. Um, bring Reno Scumbat. But, uh, you, you know, they just threw a bunch of teams together. But I enjoy the match. Um, I think the Good Brothers are just going to win the title back. But if you want to give it a little little more shock value, I, I think it's a good – I, I want to see Swan and Mac get the titles that they should have won a year or so ago. Um, and it will be a good way to keep Swan relevant after, you know, everything going on. So, um, you know. Yeah, listen, I'm almost always going to root for the black team whenever possible. But <laughs> – I think TJP and Follow the Ball deserve to be champions. Like TJP, in my humble opinion, is one of the best wrestlers in the world. Like he's just so good, dog. There's nothing he can't do um, as a wrestler. He can talk. He can submission wrestle. He can high fly. Like he can do it all. He really is a great wrestler. And him with Follow Ball together, you have that big man, little man pairing. Like they got a good act, man. They got a good act. And why not? You know, why not? I think they'll be fun in front of crowds once we, once we get people back. I would, that's who I would want to see win the title. Uh, Rich Swan and Willie Mac, yeah, that can't be bad. You know what I mean? That can't possibly be, be bad. Like, there's just, those are four guys who can really, 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 really work. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's um, be and so the matches will be good no matter what. Yeah. I just would like to see, like, man, what is so hard about taking all four of those teams and having them beat other teams? Five, go go get you eight jobbers, eight local jobbers, <laughs> put together some teams and have the the four teams you're talking about all take turns beating these teams for weeks, then cutting promos. Or, and so we, we get to, you know, get to see these teams and get to feel their personality. So when you finally do the match and put these teams together, we actually care. Yeah, I do. We actually <laughs> care. Why? What is so hard about that? I don't understand why they don't believe in building matches that way. But I, it, it's it's almost impossible for me to be excited. I mean, I think it's going to be a good match because there's a lot of good wrestlers in the match, right. right? Yeah. But it's tough for me to be invested in the outcome as a fan. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's no real story here. There's no story whatsoever. It, it screams like the opening of Monday Night Raw and Cena would come out and then Orton's like, well, I want a title shot. And then all the five top dogs, the only right. way to settle this is a five-way, you know, like. <laughs> right, exactly. Just straight out the book, man. Um, You're going to have a tag team match with the Undertaker, player. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> oh shit, those are good days, man. That was the, the same thing every week. <laughs> yeah, 